always near, always right there. We just have to remain patient. Okay, so learning to complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, he explains in the Quran, very beautifully in the Quran, he explains the state of the individuals during the battle of Khandaq. So they built this, uh, this Khandaq or this, this, uh, uh, this ridge to keep their enemy from getting close. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he explains that their enemy began to come from every which direction. And he explains them in the Quran, he explains their state. He says, This is, if we look at this, this description, Allah mentions that their eyes went wild. They were afraid. Imagine, just you can imagine this, their eyes going wild. And their hearts reaching their throats. The heart beating so fast, reaching their throats. And they began to entertain doubts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many times if we look at our lives, the times that our eyes go wild, we don't know what's going to happen next. And we began to entertain not whether Allah exists, but whether Allah will help us at this particular moment. And Allah, he, he mentions in the next verse, And to, to put this in English, they were shaken with the utmost shaking. You know, this is, I mean, you really can't uh, translate this. They were shaken with the utmost shaking. So their trial was very severe. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the enemy began to approach, and they began to think, perhaps we're not going to be helped at this moment, Allah caused the shift in the weather to cause their enemy to back up. And their enemy was defeated on that particular day. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're going to go through trials. We're going to go through tribulation. We're going to experience al-ibtila. And this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the Muslims, this is Allah's way of bringing us closer. And for the disbeliever, this is Allah's way of pushing them away. Because in all of our trials, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can place within that trial tawfiq. The individuals who they didn't in working in the prison. You see individuals who are in there for double life. They will be in there for all of their life. Some of the prisoners, the inmates, they have 150 years. Knowing that human beings will not live most of the times past 90 or 80, 70, 90 years. But they've been given double life. And these particular individuals, but they found Islam in the prison. So this means that in their trial is tawfiq, Allah bringing them closer to him through a trial, through these a hundred and so years locked up behind bars. And now they're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was tawfiq within that trial and tribulation. And many a times you ask them, do they have regrets? They say no, because perhaps I would have never found uh, knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if I remain in that particular life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me a trial to bring me closer to him. And this really changes your life when hearing, on, uh, on hearing this. And we have to look at all of our trials. Allah, he says in the Quran, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُسِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِّنْ قَبَلِ أَنْ نَبْرَاهَا so Allah, He lets us know that there is nothing that we experience, no trial that we experience that's on the earth or within ourselves except that it was written. There's always a higher wisdom to everything that we experience in life. There's always a higher wisdom. It was written before it came into existence. This is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah lets us know this in order so that we do not grieve too much when we don't get something. Okay, many times we grieve when we don't get something. The brother came up to me, he said, she belonged to me. I said, no, brother, the sister's married now. She doesn't belong to you. 
Whatever is meant for you will not pass you by. Whatever was meant for you, you will have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brother, has perhaps saved you. Allah has saved you. So thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is important that we don't become overzealous or we don't begin to brag and boast about the things that we receive. Everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to realize this. Allah does not like the vainglorious boaster. So all of our trials, there's a higher wisdom to it. Let us remain patient. At the beginning of the talk, I mentioned, have we ever saw a tree? Do you all remember what I said at the beginning of the talk? Somebody repeat it to me, inshallah. Believe it or not, in Arizona, we do have falling trees, yes. Okay, so a tree with the leaves, the leaves at the yes. base of that particular tree. Yes. Okay? So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in the hadith, uh, so Allah oh, the Prophet وسلم, he mentions this particular hadith that there was none from the Muslims when they even if they received a small pricking you know on their, their, their finger or they get you know stuck by something on their uh, their finger except that it's an expiation. For, for their sins that they've committed. And the Prophet saw something just as a tree that sheds its leaves. So the sins are removed just as a tree that sheds its leaves. So next time we see a tree in this particular state, imagine that this tree is the Muslim. And the leaves that are falling from the branches of that tree are the sins that have been shed from the Muslim. When that Muslim is going through any type of trials. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our, our shortcomings or our trials and our tribulations, our struggles that we go through be a means of removing our sins. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to remember Him in all of our states, whether we are going through good times or that we are going through hard times. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our hearts to continue to remember Him throughout our trials and our tribulations. And we ask that our trials do not become so burdensome that we forget to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of our trials, all of us are going to go through something. Continue to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These trials are perhaps good for you. They're good for all of us. This is a medicine for all of us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to bring his servants closer to him. We ask that Allah allow us to realize that reality. So I don't know if you all have any questions or, okay. But this Saturday night is probably time for us to go and uh, relax and, you know, be with our families. So, this, is, this is relaxing, mashallah. Oh, this is relaxing. You mentioned, like, that the Rusul and Anbiya, like when they complained, they, they directed themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you mind mentioning some, some of the examples? Like you mentioned the examples of the Sahaba, like Qal Mata Nasrullah, Nasrullah. Other examples, like if you recall? Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's so many examples of, uh, you know, the Anbiya really calling to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have, uh, you know, even the example, uh, of um, you know Ibrahim, you know, and uh, you know Allah mentions uh, in the Quran, you know him, you know facing his father, then he would go to his Lord, you know. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions that he would go to uh, you know to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this he was going through trials with his uh, with his family uh, members, and the, the thing about uh, you know trials that's important. This is uh, throughout the Quran, Mata Nasrullah. This is uh, Musa. Salam, when he, you know, went through his uh, trial, you know, crying to Allah, you know, felt fiddly. He struck the Coptic man and he, and he uh, uh, killed him, you know. And it's important when we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not going to Allah and blaming 
the other party that perhaps we're going through the trial with. You know, so this was the, uh, the sunnah of shaitan to blame. And uh, we see Musa, he says, Dalamtu nafsi, fulfilli. Okay? Dalamtu, I wronged my own soul. Okay, so this is a way, you know, this is another talk, of course. But when we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we look at the, the sunnah, the anbiya, they would go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not blaming so-and-so, but blaming themselves, I have wronged my own soul. You know, when they, the lump to nafsi, Adam and his, his wife, the lumna and fusana. So, we have wronged our own selves. Shaitan, he blamed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? He blamed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for us, when we go to Allah, when we go going through our trials, taking responsibility for our own actions. Okay, so you know, Allah mentions in the Quran that perhaps what we go through is from what our own hands have put forth. Okay, so uh, immediately, uh, I mean this talk can take all day, but immediately uh, when we go through trials too, we look to our own sins. You know, because perhaps we're doing things to place ourselves in just bad situations. So we look to our own sin, and we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the lamtu, the lamtu uh, nafsi. You know, I've grown my own soul, fulfilli, fulghafara lahu. You know, Allah said that he uh, forgave uh, Musa. And this is similar uh, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, the rest of the NBA. So I hope that's uh, clear. My brain's a little shut down. Uh, we went hiking today, on the yeah. so you know that hiking kind of wore me out. Um, so, any more questions or uh, comments? Yes. So, Charlotte, we have a hospitality committee. So, can you tell that committee? I think they're on the other side. Okay. Can you tell them what they should do step by step? How they should approach it? Okay. Okay. So, oh, so for uh, the masjid. A hospitality uh, committee is, uh, you know, I think it's imperative, you know, because uh, we don't want to get lost in, like I mentioned before, uh, yes, last night, the depersonalization of the masjid, okay? In other terms, Walmartization, I don't know how we would say that, but turning the masjid into a Walmart, where the individual, you know, doesn't feel any responsibility on being hospitable, okay? So sometimes if we go to a supermarket, we go in and purchase our product, and we walk past people, people don't say anything. And the masjid sometimes can turn into that, especially when the community is huge and big. You come into the masjid and nobody greets you. So I think it's imperative for us to have this uh, hospitality committee. There's a few things that we can do. They have uh, computer programs like uh, Constant Contact. Uh, have you heard of this? Yeah. Okay, so Constant Contact, you send out your mass email. Okay, and it, it, it can send out email to thousands of people. Uh, the masjid can have a, a newsletter. And just, you know, with maybe one article, you know, that you send out every month. Uh, you have a database. So maybe uh, the hospitality committee can collect a, a database. So when Muslims come in, you have greeters, you know. So when people come into the door, for Salatul Jumu'ah, you have people at the door seeing if people have any needs. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Do you have any needs? What can we do for you? Is this your first time here? You know, and then uh, uh, really greeting them and taking their information. And if this is the first time visitor, this seems like a lot of work, but you know, you have your hospitality committee. If this is the first time visitor, they send a letter directly to their home. Okay? Mentioning them by their name in the letter. Remember, the sweetest sound to a person is the sound of their own name, okay? So, the main thing that people are concerned with are, are other people concerned with me, okay? People, they want to know that the people really care, okay? So, sending a letter to their home and saying, uh, you know, thank you, we, we, we appreciated your presence, and we would like to see you uh, again, okay? So and also taking their information, if you don't see that individual for a while, giving them a follow-up uh, phone call, you know. So these are all things that I think would, uh, would help enhance, you know, when you have a hospitality committee that's really over, overseeing doing all these things. And then having, um, you know, like we mentioned before, some gifts, maybe some basic books or, 
a brochure. Uh, you should have a brochure about some, somewhat the history of the masjid. And uh, for new visitors, uh, taking them on a, a, a basic tour and giving them some history on how long this masjid has, uh, you know, been been here, been in existence. Okay, and this was, this is some of the job of the uh, the hospitality committee. And they give new visitors like you would announce after Salatul Jumu'ah, is anybody here for the first time? You know, and uh, somebody may raise their hand, or they may not. But for the individual raising their hand, you give them, uh, you know, a new a, a new visitor package. Okay, so they come in with a, they come in with nothing, and they leave out with something. Okay, so the, the thing of hospitality, the reaction is when people walk out. They're saying to themselves, what just happened? What just happened? I'm going back there, you know, having sweets. You know, this is important. How do we act? You know, this, uh, this notion of uh, some homemade sweets, not the store-bought uh, stuff, but somebody making some actual homemade sweets, you know. And so this creates memories, you know, for the people when they come back. And I think, uh, you know, you all just do maybe some of those simple things, it has set the masjid apart from, you know, of course there's a lot more things to do, but it, it uh, you know, keeps some uh, uniqueness, because there's many centers, I've been in many masajid, even as the khatib, uh, going in and uh, giving the khutbah. I walk in, nobody greets me, I don't know what to do, I'm asking people what time does Salatul Jumu'ah start, I mean, it's just terrible, I'm, and I'm, uh, they're looking at me, who are you? I'm like, well, you all ca called me to uh, come and give the chutbah. So, <laughs> so I don't, you know, no response. I don't have, you know, nobody uh, greets me, you know, nothing. So we want to uh, remove that from the masjid. You know, people come in, they get, you know, they get hit with abdiyah, uh, they get honored. You know, one of the, the, the hadith pertaining to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when they said that people felt like they were the most honored in his presence, you know, as if when they ran into him, they said he honored me the most more than you, and the next person felt well he honored me more than he honored you. Okay, so we have to bring this back into uh, uh, you know to our dean, and then you know make sure that our we don't depersonalize our our uh, spaces, our worship spaces. I don't know if that's enough. I can prob probably, uh, you know, give a little bit more, but uh, I can write it. Maybe I'll write it down because this is a whole. Yeah. We do a whole workshop on this. So I can write it down and. Uh, well, I have it written down. I have a package, and uh, I'll send it to you, inshallah. Yeah. Question on that: How would you? Uh, what advice would you give just to make sure that this committee doesn't die out after like two months? Like they're uh -huh. consistent. Yeah, accountability, you know, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, and this has to always be emphasized, trust me. How many times have people, I mean, um, uh, not too long ago I had uh, perhaps a non-functioning board, you know, I've uh, been in situations where the massage, you know, um, uh, especially early on when I first I didn't, when I first became Imam at the Masjid, I didn't have no tools to work with. I didn't know what to do. I had a non-functioning board, you know, and it felt like uh, everybody was hijacking the position and the titles without actually doing the work, okay? And there's many Masajid who have uh, individuals who hijack these positions or the titles, okay? And they don't actually do the work. And you have to have uh, meetings. You know, where you hold people accountable, okay? The people have to be held accountable. Some things may be written in the, uh, uh, the bylaws. And the people have to uh, have respect enough to say they're too busy because this is a, a matter, this is a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All this, you know, that, this work that we do. I used to complain as an imam, not getting paid as an imam. And, uh, and brother told me, man, you better be, you know, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you to speak, to speak before the people. And this is a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I changed, changed my whole attitude. I said, oh, this is not just a title and, and position. This is a responsibility. So I think changing, you have to really change the culture. And it has to be constantly addressed with the people. That these aren't just titles. 
These are serious positions. These are trust. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has entrusted you with the uh, responsibility. So maybe, you know, mentioning, mentioning this at, uh, at meetings, you know, and uh, checking with people, you know. This is tough because, you know, the reality is there's only going to be a few people doing the bulk of the work. This is in most of the masajid. There's only going to be maybe one, two, three, four people at the most doing the bulk of the work. And if you all get a, uh, an environment where you have 20 people, you are blessed. And know that you are unique. And <laughs> there's not many communities like you. You know. So trust me, every uh, community has trouble with this. And I think you, know, you have to have meetings. Uh, you all need retreats. So maybe a retreat. Take the board and the, this executive committee. Go away somewhere. Go out the city to a retreat center and speak about the future of the community. And do this as a means of a reward, you know, so you reward the people who have been doing the work with a little vacation, two day vacation, but also, this is an accountability check, you know, and it also brings the hearts uh, together. So I would suggest maybe once or twice a year, go away to a retreat center and also plan more about the community and, and speak about the future where you all want to go. Go away from the uh, from the uh, maybe the city or something. You have to find a little retreat center. You know, maybe has a spa or something, and where the people feel good. Like Mashallah, I'm the president of the masjid, and I'm getting <laughs> I'm in this uh, nice jacuzzi. And then you know, and then we're gonna have this uh, this meeting for, uh, for about eight hours. You know, where we discuss about the uh, the, uh, the masjid. So I mean, these are the incentives. You know that you may want to, or strategies that you may want to give to, uh, uh, you know, the people. So, <laughs> any more questions? Yeah. But that may be good. Invite me to the retreat. I want to relax. Hearing, hearing this, uh, Sheikh, it sounds like it's a good idea to have an ICT president who's a chiropractor. Yeah. <laughs> no, mashallah, you all have uh, uh, good people. Mashallah, I've enjoyed my. Uh, well, a few days here. I like the jacuzzi idea, but I didn't like the eight-hour meeting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Doing good? You didn't show up?